Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us today on this channel of Equipping Leaders Network. We're so excited that we get to have you here today, and we are more excited about getting to share Dr. Lenny Skeen with you and her persistent purpose. She is somebody that is so precious and so valuable in this world today that she is a woman that is an encourager. She decided at an age that she wanted to be a Barnabas. At some point in time in her life, she decided that she wanted to be a Barnabas, and that means being an encourager. Barnabas was a man that came alongside the apostles in the Bible to encourage them and to help them finish strong. And she is somebody that encourages and loves people for who they are, where they are. She was a nursing professor at Langston University for many years, and she retired not too long ago. And she wants people to know that your purpose is not your job. Your purpose is not your hobby. Your purpose is to love people and encourage them. Because I tell you what, nobody is going to say, no, I don't want you to encourage me. No, I don't want you to think about me. No, I don't want you to listen to me. Those are things that every human being wants and desires is to be listened to and to be loved and to be encouraged. So Lenny is going to share with you her story of how she loves and encourages people. And I hope that it impacts you in your heart and your spirit. And I used to think being an educator or a nurse was my persistent purpose, but then I got the opportunity to retire. And when you don't get to do what you think you're good at, then you get to have a little depression because you no longer have your purpose. But I, I want you to know that what you do isn't your persistent purpose. And early on in my life, I discovered that there were only a couple of things that lasted through eternity. One is people, and the other is God's Word. When Saul got saved, uh, nobody wanted to spend any time with him because he had a reputation of killing people. So um, Barnabas came alongside him to encourage him and um, to help him in his ministry. And in fact, he did it for quite a while. Um, and in fact, Barnabas's nephew, John Mark, went on a couple of the uh, missionary journeys with him but on the last one that he was on, he bailed early. And in fact, it caused a rift between Paul and Barnabas because Barnabas wanted John Mark to come on another one of their journeys. And Paul was adamant about, he didn't want to quit her with him. He didn't want this kid messing with him and he just didn't think he was worth it. And so Barnabas said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with John Mark. And, and Paul went with Silas. And at the end of Paul's life, he ends up writing and says, I need you to send me John Mark. I have need of him. So John Mark was the quitter, remember? He was a guy that didn't start out well, but he spent a lot of time with Barnabas. And Barnabas only spent time with finishers. And so I wanted to be that kind of person. I wanted to be able to invest in people's lives um, so that they would know that I felt like they were finishers. Early on, in my early 20s, I started writing letters and encouraging words uh, to different friends and acquaintances. And then, later on in my life, um, I was asked to come join the singles group. And I've been single a long time, and the singles group was mostly had 20 year olds. And I was 40, and I thought, I do not belong in this group. And so I finally told this Sunday school leader, I said, I, I will come in your group, but I will come with the purpose of listening and observing and seeing what these people are really having needs of. And it's not always a, a mate or a partner. And, um, I will be writing letters to each one of them every week for a year. 
And so I need you to know that so that if they start asking questions, you don't give me away. And they said, okay. So I remember the first week that I sent out letters, several of the people came to church and said, I have a secret admirer. I got this unbelievable letter about someone who's praying for me. They care about me. They're concerned. And I think this is amazing. And I thought, I'm not your secret admirer. <laughs> and there was about uh, 15 to 20 people in this class. And so it wasn't just writing one or two letters. It was writing a bunch. And so I would have to listen and take notes to see what was going on in people's lives so that I could say things to them that were personal and that um, they would know that I had been listening and not just, you know, spending time in this class waiting for my partner to show up. But anyway, after the end of the year, I wrote each person and told them that it was me. And several of them had said that that year had made a huge difference to know that every week they were going to get a note about somebody praying for them and caring about them and listening to what's going on in their lives. So I, what I want you to know is that there are several different ways you can, uh, number one, know what your persistent purpose is, and number two, for you to be able to do that individually the way you would do it. It doesn't have to be the way I would do it or the way anybody else would do it. It, it has to have your stamp um, and personality on it. Uh, I like to do crafts, and so like it's not unusual for me to do a shadow box and um, put it in the mail with a note saying, I'm thinking about you, thought you might enjoy this. One of the projects that I'm doing for some family members is I'm taking this inspirational Bible and I'm, <clears throat> I've started out coloring, I've started out coloring in it. And then I decided, well, I would color every other one so that the other person would have some stuff to color also. And then I'm going to underline some of my favorite verses and then make a little statement about why that verse is my favorite. And so I'm hoping at Christmas to end up giving this to uh, several different family members. So I'm doing more than one of those. Um, I do... I still write cards. I still, um, right now I'm doing dot to dot uh, or diamond dot painting. And so I frame those and, and give them away just to let people know that I've been thinking about them and uh, I enjoyed doing this for them while I was uh, doing my own persistent purpose. I just want to encourage you to know that we can either build people up or we can tear them to the ground. And I want to encourage you that there are a lot of folks in your sphere of influence who have need of encouragement and who have the capability to learn how to be an encourager from you. And that can make a, a waterfall effect and change the world around us, even in this pandemic time. And so, because um, there's nothing keeping you from writing a letter to tell somebody that you're thinking about them or that you're praying for them or that you want to know if they have a need that you can help meet. And um, it doesn't take a lot to sit and really listen, to have great eye contact and to not be thinking about what you're going to say back because what you have to say is so important, but to really hear what that person has to say. And sometimes that's all they need is somebody to hear them and they can solve their own problems and you can just come alongside and pat them on the back and tell them that they're doing a good job. But anyway, that's my persistent purpose. It's not education. It's not nursing. It's not being an educator. It's being an encourager. And I would highly encourage each of you to find out what your persistent purpose is and to know that there's only two things that last forever. And one of those is people, and the other is God's Word.
And so I would recommend that you spend time with both of those. Thank you very much. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this is something that shows value to you, please make sure to share and subscribe and leave a comment below about the things that you felt, the things that you think about what Dr. Lenny Skeen shared. And be blessed.